Welcome to the Minnesota 2023 deer opener. So that stand that we hung last video, um, I had a camera on one of the trails there that that area kind of intersected. So tonight I walked out to the stand to grab the camera cards and there is a great big fresh scrape right, well my gosh, 30 yards from the stand. I don't know if you can see that light piece of burlap in the trees over there. That's the stand we just hung about two weeks ago. And look at this. Right underneath this tree, great big fresh scrape. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Nice. So I grabbed the camera card and I'm just going through it and, and come over here and take a look at some of these pictures. We definitely have some deer in the area and I think that's going to be a good place for the stand. And on my Tacticams, I've been getting updates with deer moving through the area and there's been some decent bucks, but the problem is we just had a full moon a couple days ago and the bucks were chasing does already uh, with that full moon. And so I'm a little bit concerned that everything is going to be nocturnal. And then I'm a little bit concerned that with me being here at the cabin with River, just the noise that we make is going to force them to go nocturnal or scare them out of the area. But I got everything unpacked. I went out to the stand, got, grabbed the camera card, came in, went and got some wood. And I was just kind of getting settled into the cabin and I got an alert on the driveway. And here there was a doe in the driveway about, you know, 40 yards from the cabin. So I think some of them that are used to me will be fine. It's the big bucks that uh, I think we might end up scaring. So I think we'll just go through the camera here and see what we get. So the stand is kind of like over here. Like if this is 12 o'clock, the stand is at like probably seven, eight o'clock. So this is a couple weeks ago now. Now look at this one. This is the one that I'm kind of excited about. Definitely a one, two, three, four, five. Five on this side and either four or five on this side, but he looks pretty wide and he looks decent and I've had him on the, the driveway cam, but I wasn't able to tell how big he was, but look at that neck on him. Look how swollen up he is. Definitely there chasing the does. Definitely got some does in here, which is good because the milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard, as they say. Now that big one is what we have a chance at, and this one's the one we probably will end up shooting. <laughs> That's usually our luck. We get the, the oddball. <laughs> Definitely, I think this stand is going to be the ticket this year. If we can get one of the bucks to come through during the day and... Uh, one of these ones that looked like one of the bucks was... There's that little buck again, it's hard to tell. But you can just see his little, his little antlers here. So in the driveway cameras, I've had that big 10-pointer, I've had a 6-pointer, and I've had like a 4-point, and then I see this little spike. So there's definitely bucks around. It's just a matter of, you know, will they be where we're at? See, there's that, I think this is that big one again, although I don't know. Well, River Dog heard something outside, now he wants to go investigate, but no. You stay in the cabin. You go lay down. Go lay in your bed. Good boy. Got my bed all pulled back, warming up. All right, everybody. I think I'm going to do some reading or work on some editing, but uh, I will catch you in the morning. And tomorrow, a hunter comes. And tomorrow's Friday. And Saturday is the Minnesota deer opener. Welcome to deer camp. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I just want to interrupt the video for a little public service announcement. And I promised, because I promised some of my viewers that did not like hunting videos, that I would warn them when an animal was harvested. So for you folks that don't want to watch video where an animal has been killed or a hunter has harvested game, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is probably a good time for you to skip the rest of the video and tune in next week when we're back to building on the cabin. And for the rest of you, enjoy the hunt.
finally had one come out of the opening and I shot. And all it did was lift one leg. So I think I missed it. So I shot again and then it ran off down the ridge. So I'm gonna give it about 15, and there was another one with it. So I'm gonna give it about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna get down and check. I, I feel like it should have been a good shot, but I expected it to drop on the first one shot. I don't know what's going on. It's 8.09. I saw those two. I had one blow at me, and I've heard one or two walking that I couldn't see. Okay, I've waited about 20 minutes, give or so, and it's been quiet since then. You can see the stand right there that I shot from. That was the stand under shot a deer last year. Judging by the blood, I'm suspecting a long shot. That must be the trail that I've heard of walking on this morning. They've been just out of sight. I came back to the cabin and I walked into the yard and there was a deer. There's that trail. That trail goes between the low area and the clearing here. And I came back to the yard and a deer took off running through there. And of course that trail goes right in front of Hunter's stand. So I peek my head. So then I come in the cabin, unload my gun, and I see Hunter's walking back. And I'm like, dude, you should have sat. You, the deer would have come right in front of you. That's okay. It was a doe too, so. We're gonna go back and we're gonna process this deer. Get this deer brought up to the cabin. It would be really nice to be able to take the four-wheeler back and get it, but it's like nine o'clock in the morning. I don't wanna like make too much commotion. Hopefully Hunter still has a chance at a deer. run downhill. Whew. I'm almost to the top of the first ridge. Then we have the second one.
Well, Hunter just came in for lunch, so I'm gonna go in and make some soup for him to warm up. But one thing I like to do is, I like to skin my deer right away when the deer is warm. The skin comes off so much easier than if you hang it for three or four days and then try to get it off. It's so much more pleasant cutting the deer up when it's warm, when it's cold out, so your hands aren't freezing than after it's been a icicle for three days. So what I do to keep the meat from drying out then, is I just saran wrap it with a couple I saran wrap it with a couple layers of uh, cellophane and that keeps the outer skin from getting all dried out and crunchy. So as you can see, I've got my tenderloins, my back straps, my hind quarter, hind quarter, front quarter, front quarter, uh, my brisket, and then, and then I'm working on a couple bags of trim and uh, neck meat. I can't show you that because YouTube will uh, take my video down or demonetize me at the least just because it's a butcher it's a it's the butchering scene so we're gonna skip that but uh anyway I'm gonna get these quarters thrown in some coolers it's 30 to 28 degrees today so it's perfect temperature and uh, and that's where we're at Stands left on public land are fair game to use if they're not occupied. So what do you think? Think this one is uh, trustworthy? Well, another morning, getting ready to hit the deer stands. How are you feeling about today, Hunter? Optimistic. Good, good. So how many deer have you seen so far in a total? Three. No shots or anything? No. Today's the day. So as you can see, Hunter has gotten to sleep in the bed. Well, dear old dad and River Dog have been camped out in the van for two nights. But that's okay. I have that heater in the van, so it's like a camper van. It's been fine. But you know how it is with this younger generation. I gotta make it posh and vacation-like, otherwise they won't wanna come, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta get ready. We will catch you guys on the stand. This is going to be Hunter's first deer that he'll ever gut completely by himself and cut up. So this is going to be a good learning experience for him. 
It's another reason uh, I decided to that we decided to take this deer early in the morning so we have all day to deal with it before he has to go home. So, all right, I'm gonna spare you the gory details and we'll catch back with you in a little bit. Well, bye. Thanks for the weekend. Say, don't forget to say bye to River Dog. Drive safe in case the roads are slippery. It is pouring rain out. You gotta have ice in the coolers. So much for deer season in November. Time to cut this video short. So it's been raining since last night and the weather came up to about 40 degrees and it's supposed to be warmer and raining for the next few days. So I need to get back to the river house and I need to get that meat taken care of, which means getting it cut up into steaks and whatnot and put in the freezer. Um, I don't have the means to freeze that much meat here at the cabin. So we're gonna have to go back to the river house to do that. I was hoping that it was gonna be cold and that the meat would freeze and uh, sometimes what I do with a hind is when you start uh, cleaning all your meat, when you start finishing all your meat and putting it into steaks and getting all the silver skin off and everything else, it gets to be kind of a tedious process and sometimes it's nice to break that down. So what I'll do is I'll put that whole wrapped quarter in the freezer and then come April when I have nothing to do in the spring, I'll pull that out, let it thaw for two days and then I'll just work through it and then I'm nice and fresh and I'm not tired and I'm not getting sloppy. So it, it's nice to break that, that chore down into manageable sections. Anyway, the weather's too warm, even with ice in the coolers, um, I can't let it sit. So we have to get back to the river house to get it taken care of and properly processed. The last thing I would want is for any of it to spoil. So we're not gonna let that happen. So it's about 5.30 in the morning. I'm just packing everything up and we're gonna hit the road. So I hope you enjoyed this year's deer hunt. Um, you know, it's kind of special. A lot of people hunt for a lot of different reasons and I've never been an antler hunter. I, I just can't find a good recipe for them. So I am a meat hunter and um, not only is it the meat hunting, but it's just the tradition and the experience and an excuse to get together with my son and spend time and, and uh, spend time not only outdoors and in creation, but then in the evenings when you sit around and talk because there's nothing else to do. So don't forget to comment or leave a thumbs up. Helps the video, which helps me. And as always, I love you guys and we will see you soon.